Syria, the world's fight club. Countries go there to release their aggression against each other without starting a war. And what is rule number one? Nobody talks about it. Now, last time most people even mentioned the Syrian civil war, ISIS was on its last breath and things were looking up. But things have since gone insane. As a U.S. airstrike against a Syrian pro-government forces killed several hundred Russian mercenaries. Israel launched a large-scale assault on Iranian targets inside Syria. Violent clashes between the Turkish military and Syrian Kurds are intensifying. The Israeli F-16 crashed in northern Israel after coming under fire from Syria. It's really not a good sign when your research on Syria's instability doesn't even have time to mention ISIS. Seriously, what is going on over there? Well, let's start with the big one, US and Russia, because it seems that, and there's a lot to digest in this story, but reports claim that Putin ally Perogin, also known as Putin's chef, was the one who ordered Russian mercenaries to attack a US army base in Syria. Oh man, letting your chef command mercenaries in Russia? That's a recipe for disaster. So who is Perogin? Well, he's kind of like Putin's Jared Kushner. All right, you have to win Syria as well as... The U.S. Special Prosecutor says Yevgeny Prigozhin was deeply connected to the Russian campaign to sway the 2016 election for President Trump. So clearly this guy must be ex-KGB or something to be able to handle all of this. Why the nickname The Chef? Prigozhin, who reportedly served jail time for robbery, started off selling hot dogs, according to his own account. He went on to run a catering company servicing schools, the military, the Kremlin, and dinners for visiting U.S. presidents. Yeah, kind of makes it almost seem normal to see stories about Trump nominating his wedding planner to head the federal housing office. You know those caterers are a sharp bunch. So we're focusing today on this hot dog vendor turned quasi general of Russian mercenaries who recently ordered an attack on a US army base. And in case you've been desensitized, this definitely falls under the category of things that are not normal. To understand this attack, we need to take a step back. Actually, a few steps back. Because, and this may sound like a dumb question, but when did we invade Syria? I mean, I remember hearing recently. My answer is simple. I will not put American boots on the ground in Syria. That was kind of a big deal at the time. Well, I guess he technically found a loophole though, because that charred piece of land is about as much Syria as Caitlyn Jenner is male. That ship has sailed. So when did we officially invade Syria? Well, it was October 1st, 2015 when CBS announced American boots will soon be on the ground in Syria. President Obama has ordered about 50 U.S. Special Operations troops to northern Syria. Then, about a year ago, ABC reported that... In the fight against ISIS, today the U.S. Defense Secretary announced that 200 new U.S. Special Ops troops are heading to Syria. Since then, it's just kind of snowballed, with the U.S. now having 2,000 troops there and building two bases. Man, when Trump said we needed to build more infrastructure, I wish he had been a little more specific. So anyways, we're there, with bases, and one of those bases got attacked by Russian mercenaries. Which raises another question, what is a Russian mercenary? Well, Russia seems to hire their mercenaries from two companies, Slavonic Corp and Wagner Corp. And if Wagner Corp sounds super American, well, they're also known as whatever this is. Yeah, that's definitely Russian. The group of mercenaries that attacked us were from the mercenary group Wagner Corp, so I'm going to focus on them. It's kind of ironic that Russia, a communist country, is using a privatized military group while the U.S. is still using one owned by the state. According to the U.S. Treasury, Wagner is led by Dmitry Utkin, seen here meeting President Vladimir Putin. Utkin is under U.S. sanctions because of Wagner's activities in Ukraine. He has a long association with a Russian oligarch called Yevgeny Prigozhin, who's close to the Kremlin. Hey, Prigozhin, hot dog guy! Man, that guy must have been one heck of a caterer. So, because mercenaries are hired private industries, what is motivating their presence in Syria? Another of Prigozhin's many companies is called Evropolis. 
It has an office in Damascus and a deal with the Assad regime. According to a contract examined by CNN, Evropolis gets a quarter of revenues from oil and gas fields that are recaptured on behalf of the Syrian government. Jeez, our words for oil just keep getting less and less subtle. Don't you miss the good old days when the government had to at least pretend to be concerned with humanitarian rights or weapons of mass destruction? This doesn't completely answer our question though because now we have two companies, one motivated by returning oil to Assad and the other motivated by money from Russia. So why is Russia hiring mercenaries in Syria? Well, because Assad has been quite accommodating to Russia, giving them military bases in Syria as well as access to oil. Pretty simple stuff actually, no need to write a 12 page paper about it. I have to mention though that most people think Wagner Group is just a front for the Russian military, giving their government plausible deniability. Alright, so back to the conflict at hand. Why did hundreds of Russian mercenaries attack an American base? I mean, basic logic would dictate, hmm, of all of the many diverse groups to assault in Syria, maybe don't pick the country with globally the most powerful military. Well, there are two main reasons this attack happened. First, US and Kurdish forces attack a Syrian government base in the oil-rich region of Deir Azor in Syria. Russian media say an unknown number of private Russian military contractors were killed, possibly up to 200. US officials estimate the death toll at around 100. This was reported a few months ago, and is the real problem with having so many tangentially related wars going on at the same time. An anti-ISIS participant, Russia, happened to be at a base held by the Syrian government. Wait, the Syrian government's still a thing? Well, if you say so, teleprompter. When the US bombed that base and killed members of the Syrian government, whom we hope to overthrow to put in, well, we'll cross that road when we get there, we killed Russians in the process. Certainly though, the Russians aren't exactly thrilled to be collateral damage in an attack against one of their allies. but. This is Syria. There are so many different nations here you could throw a stone in any direction and start World War III. The other reason that we were attacked was... They were either in the process of or about to attack a gas installation where U.S. Special Forces were already dug in with their Kurdish allies. But just why the attack took place at all comes down to oil. Oh man, bringing the Kurds into this? That's a whole separate episode. One key takeaway here was the emphasis on gas installation. If you think the US is obsessed with securing oil, try looking at Syria, a country where oil could be its only export besides ISIS propaganda. With the intent on reclaiming the oil field, the Russian mercenaries attacked us. And well, it didn't really work out too well. U.S. Special Operations Forces on the ground called in the massive counterattack from the sky. The U.S. airstrikes included AC-130 gunships, F-15s, F-22s, Apache helicopter gunships, and Marine artillery on the ground. All available U.S. jets in the area responded and killed 100 enemy fighters, I am told. No U.S. troops were hurt. One allied Syrian fighter was hurt. Furthermore, when the smoke cleared, most people estimated that the number of casualties for Russian private contractors was actually around 200. Now, some are alarmed by this because this was the largest direct battle between the US and Russian armed forces since the end of the Cold War. Who knows, maybe ISIS could take out the Western world after all. That said, Trump, if there's one thing we all know you're good at, it's talking to the Russians. This is the moment you've been training for, so please sort this out for the good of everyone. This might be a little hard to sort out though because the Russians are denying anything happened while simultaneously criticizing us for those same things. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of that's all I have to say about that, click here. And please click here to subscribe and remember to like below. And if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group. That's all I have to say about that. And as always. Thank you for watching.